Hey, Change Agents, welcome to the show. Today, we're going to be talking about building nonprofit communities during social distancing. So I know a lot of people take the time to go to networking events uh, to build their communities for their nonprofit, to acquire new donors, to just build community relationships by going to networking events. Well, right now we cannot network in person, but it does not mean that we still can't be, build a community of people for volunteers or new clientele or donors during this time. You just have to be very strategic about how you go about building those communities. So some of the ways to build a community during social distancing is to become a resource and a, 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 a a place of support for your community. And your community just doesn't mean the people that you're serving within the community. It means holistically. So we're going to get into about four different steps that you should take to build that community even during social distancing. So the first thing we're going to be talking about is checking in. And what does check in mean, mean to you? It means that you pick up the phone and call your staff, your volunteers, call some of your clients and see how they're doing. Don't take for granted that they're doing well because they have family and friends. Actually take the time to check in physically, not in person, physically meaning by phone, by text. Call or text that person. If you text them, they don't answer. Back within 24 hours, pick up the phone and call them. If you call them and they're not answering, maybe they don't have your phone your number in their phones and it's coming up as unknown and that's the reason that they're not answering. So then you need to send them a text. Make sure that you're checking in to see how they're doing, how they're going through this process, if they're having issues and be that sounding board to lead them to the um, places that they need to go to get the help that they need. A lot of people are stressed out at this point in time including your staff. They don't carry that heavy burden on their backs where they don't have needs and wants like everyone else. They have it. Make sure that you're being cognizant of the fact that not everyone deals with or is going to deal with this situation the same way. Some people just are having a really hard time adjusting. And as a leader of a nonprofit organization, it's your job to make sure that you're reaching out to these people and that you are uh, being a, a, a person who can support them. And if you yourself need support, find someone that can support you as well. Now, the second thing that you want to do is send emails. You want to make sure that you're sending emails to your staff members, to volunteers, to donors, to clients, to potential clients, making sure that you're sending emails that are inspirational, motivational, and that are resourceful. Sending out these emails on a maybe two or three times a week will be a great asset to a lot of people who are following your organization, who are looking towards someone for that moral support that they need to get through get through this. So it doesn't have to take a lot of time. You're not writing a dissertation. It can be a simple email of an inspirational meme that's a quote that you just send out thinking of you. We want you to know that we're here to help and support you. If you need something, please don't feel free to reach out to us. It can be that simple. Sending an inspirational video that you may have found on Facebook or on link um, or on YouTube, sending that out in the email, just letting them know, letting people know that they're being thought of is a big thing right now. So again, the types of emails that you can send out, inspirational emails, motivational emails, either written or memes or videos, um, send out success stories from past clients. This is a good way to showcase impact that um, the, the organization has made. Just being a beacon of hope right now is what people are looking for. So make sure you are sending out these emails on a regular basis at least three times a week. You want to stay at the front of people's minds. And the only way to do that is to constantly be in front of them. Um, and that's one of the ways to do that is sending emails. 
The third thing that you want to do is update your website. So very similarly to um, the email campaigns that you'll be sending out, you want to have a resource page on your website where you're putting any updates about what's going on in our community on that page. It doesn't matter what your mission is. Right now, you need to be a beacon of hope for the um, community. So if something is going on in your community, whether it's a food bank or, you know, maybe they're giving out grants or SNAP or whatever it is that's going on, that you can be a resource for the people who are probably going to end up on your website, whether it's your clients, again, your, your volunteers, your board members, your staff members. It doesn't matter. You want to make sure that you have a resource tab on your website where there's inspirational quotes, motivational quotes, and videos and links to different resources that are local to your community and your municipality as well as nationally. You want to become that go-to person. That is the way how you're going to build these relationships and have these relationships last beyond this crisis. Okay? People remember people who are there, people or organizations who are there for them when they needed them the most. And this is your opportunity to be that person, to get in front of your audience and let them know you're here, you're invested in the community, and you're going to do whatever is necessary to make sure that they have the right resources to create change within their life so that they are less stressed. We don't want to have people, you know, just going off the rails, taking drugs or um, committing suicide. We don't want any of that. And one way to curb that is to really let people know that you are here for them, that you support them, that they have someone to talk to, that they have someone to reach out to, that they have resources that they can get. So putting up things like that, Alcoholic Anonymous, if they've moved online, you know, find out who in your area is doing it, get the links for that, get the links for the um, suicide um, prevention line, get the links for mental health lines, put all of those, and, the, and, and like I said, SNAP or any of those other resources that people are going to need right now needs to be on a resource tab on your website, okay? And the last thing is your social media. And basically, it is going to be a replica of the resource tab on your website. So, but you don't have a resource tab on your social media platform. But every day, once or twice a day, you can put some of those same resources that you have on that resource tab on your website on your social media page. So you're keeping in contact, you're keeping engaged with your social media audience. And again, you're becoming a beacon of hope, a beacon of resources for your social media audience as well, okay? Because some of them may not go to visit your website. So you need to replicate that same thing on your social media platform. That same, all of the re list of resources that you have on your website, you need to re, re you need to repost them onto social media. Of course, on social media, people like things that look a little pretty or really eye-catching. So making sure you put them on some type of a flyer or something that people can really zone in on and get what they need and move on. Some of these same things can be sent out in your email campaign as well. But these are a few of the things that you can do to build your community during social distancing. It is all about becoming a resource, becoming that beacon that people need in order to get through this trying time. I promise you, if you take the time to actually implement these strategies, you're going to see that not only does your social media platforms grow, that your email list will grow, but after this is all said and done, people are going to, and people are back to making money and things are a lot stable. They're going to remember your organization and they're going to support your organization in some way. Whether well, it's coming out to your, um, your fundraisers, becoming annual donors, becoming volunteers, becoming board members, whatever it is, a resource, becoming referral partners, they're going to remember that you were there for them when they needed you most, that you are really invested in the um, success of your community. 
So if you really and truly want to build a community, create impact during social distancing, you need to start implementing these four strategies as soon as possible. Thank you for joining me. My information is scrolling at the bottom of the screen. Uh, if you need to get in contact with me, you want help with your nonprofit organization, I am here to help. Just get in contact with me and we can take it from there. Have a nice day, everyone. Bye-bye.